Oh, hello, and welcome once again to The Opener. My name is Matt Lees, and today I'll be reviewing a rather unusual game called Ladies and Gentlemen. Now, this is a game in which gentlemen save up as much money as they can so they can buy the ladies expensive dresses so they can look lovely at a ball. Now, already, this is quite a troubling game in the fact that it does seem to be remarkably, remarkably sexist. But thankfully, it's not a sexist game. It's a silly game. This is about taking part in a very daft era. It's laughing at Victorian values. It's laughing at gender stereotypes. And the world that you're playing in doesn't glamorise anything. It doesn't make it seem cool that these ladies are obsessed with fashion, and it doesn't make it seem cool that these men are making money in a very daft and flippant way. And actually, one of the things that really hammers this home for me is the inclusion of one of the things that the ladies can buy. Because yes, you've got dresses and shoes and trinkets and earrings, but you've also got servants. And servants are consistently the cheapest thing in the game, costing often a quarter of what it might cost to buy a nice frock. Because ladies and gentlemen isn't a game that celebrates any of the values in the box. It doesn't glamorize any of it. It just is. It encourages you to enter this dark reality and collectively laugh at just how stupid our ancestors used to be. And doing that is a hell of a lot of fun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, is a game of two halves. A bit like football, except it's nothing like football. It has absolutely nothing in common with football. The relation to football is zero. It doesn't exist. But apart from that, it's a game of two halves. And what I mean by that is the fact that you literally have half the people playing as ladies and half the people playing as gentlemen. You've probably worked that one all out already. It was on the box. It was on the box. It was on the box. But the way you actually play the game depends massively on which side of the table you're on. If you're a lady, then you play this very clever card game, trying to outplay the other people and running these little boutique shops. It's incredibly tactical and quite stressful, whereas the men have a much sillier task. The stock market is daft and frantic, but in between, really, there's not that much thought. In many regards, the ladies have a far tougher job. Each of them runs a boutique shop, and every day they can choose what they want to put in their window. They can put a bunch of stuff. Obviously, you've got straight up clothes and lovely capes, handbags and other accessories, rings and trinkets and other things, and of course, everyone's favorite, servants. Once every lady has chosen something to put in the window of their lovely shop, they choose where they'd like to go shopping with a blind vote using these tokens. After they've perused the goods on the shelves, they can choose which things they'd like to buy and hand those cards over to their doting husband in the hope that they will buy them something nice. There's an element of being sneaky and outsmarting people here though, because if nobody goes to your shop that day, then you can have what you put in the window at half price, which leads to some very clever mind games going on on this side of the table. Secondly though, if more than one person goes to the same shop, they have to choose in order what things they'd like. And the order is decided on the men's side. As people have been pointing out for many years, being a man is far less complicated. You have your money, which you earn from selling goods and fulfilling contracts on the stock market, and you also have your stocks, which are things that you can hold on to to fulfill these magic contracts, or stuff that you can just sell for a quick cash boost. All this financial trading stuff might sound quite serious, but the way it actually plays out is ludicrously silly. Each player uses one hand and one hand only to quickly look underneath all the tokens to try and find the best stuff. And you've got to bear in mind that everybody's doing this at once. We played this most of the time 3v3, but with four or five people, because there's a maximum of 10 players for this game, things are going to get a little bit frantic. But the idea is you're quickly looking around going, oh, that's good, coal, I'll have that. Um, corn, no, uh, tea. Already I'm panicked and I'm not even playing a real game because the problem is, in each game, resources are worth different amounts of money. In this game, tea is hugely valuable, as is cotton. But in other games, it'll be coal, which means you're frantically looking for stuff, not just that might be expensive, but stuff that might help you fulfill these contracts, which give you a massively lucrative boost in cash and some extra special bonuses. But also you're looking for something more important than that. You're looking for these tokens. Now, these numbered tokens that go up to one to three or four or five, you're playing with more people, order the turn in terms of who gets to go first, 
in fulfilling contracts and getting those one-off bonuses for being the first there, but also who gets to go first on the ladies' side in terms of choosing those lovely hats from the shops. The problem is, if you find a number in the stock market and you take that number, you're not allowed to take any more items from the stock market. And you can only take three each turn anyway, but it means that, let's just say I've taken some coal and then I find the number one, what do I do with that? If I take it, it means no more goods for me that turn. But if I leave it, somebody else might take it. So you have this situation whereby you might find a number and go, oh God, I'll leave it and hope that nobody noticed. Or if you're feeling cheeky, you can, as long as you don't turn it over, maybe just slide it over closer to you in the hope that nobody else spotted what you did. Because if they did spot what you did, you're screwed. So ladies and gentlemen, is essentially a team game. They've got to find the best cards and ensure that they can get them over to you in time, whereas you have to make sure that you keep your cash flow comfortable so that you can pay for all of that stuff. The problem is though, your relationship is a little bit fuzzy. They don't know exactly how much money you've got and you can only be vague about these things, whereas you don't know what they're doing on the shopping side. You don't even see what kind of shop they've got open. You'll see here these cardboard things aren't just for show. You can't see what they're doing in terms of selling stuff in the shops and they can't see the contracts so they can't get a good idea of whether or not you're about to come into a lot of money or not. To make matters even fruitier, everything happens at the same time. So whilst we're doing the stock market, they're doing the shopping. And the only time you really have any interaction is at the end of the day when the ladies say to the gentleman, perhaps can I have this handbag? And you say, my dear, I'm terribly sorry. Now, so far, what we've got is a fun little game. We've got the ladies doing their clothes shopping, the men working in the stock market, and a bit of crossover in between. It's not a bad game, it's quite simple, but it's not what makes, ladies and gentlemen, fun. What makes it fun is the fact that you're not allowed to talk to your partner unless you're in character. I believe the prospects of the market should be terribly strong today, my dear. So don't you worry. Yeah, you know this ball we're going to on, on Saturday night? Well, I thought I could do with a bit of a new outfit for it, maybe. I found these uh, these couple of things, might, thought might look nice on me, you know. Well, the thing is, darling, times are a little tough at the moment and we may have to, to make do. Yeah, I mean, you always seem pretty flush, so I didn't think a couple of new trinkets would be a big problem, to be honest. Well, I'm terribly sorry, my dear, but you can't have the shoes and the bag. Oh, right. You see, I do kind of want both of them, to be honest, because my ensemble at the moment is a bit... It's a bit weak, and uh, Clarence has got a beautiful dress, and I'm really worried that I'm just going to look like an idiot. Yes, well, the thing is, um, some of the contracts I was expecting to come through haven't come through. Really, this is, this is man's business, but uh, long story short, we should be fine in, in a couple of days. All right, so I'm just going to go to the ball like this, am I? Just, you're not even going to, you don't care what I look like. You're not even bothered about that. Listen, darling, I don't want to cause a scene, but I did spend rather a large amount of money on the servants and dress that you wanted last week. Yes, yeah, so you bought me a dress and a servant. I mean, what, what do you think that gets you, exactly? Well, I'm not made of money, and I am doing my best. I didn't marry you for your looks. Right, you do know that, right? You know, obviously I came into this with a... Honestly, sometimes I don't know why I married this woman, but she is so damn beautiful. I'm a reasonable girl, all right, but... This ball is coming up fast and I've, I've got to get some new gear for it. The standard game of ladies and gentlemen is incredibly easy to pick up and play, but there are a couple of variants that add a bit of colour. First of all, you've got the way that you play the game if you have an uneven number of players, in that one player doesn't have a husband, so she acts as a courtesan and she can receive gifts from any of the players and often will demand gifts from the players. Because at the end of the game, if the courtesan is the best dressed person at the ball, then she wins the game with the man who bought her the most stuff. Whilst if she's the least well-dressed person at the ball, then she scandalises the man who bought her the least things. It's not a very pleasant thing, but as mentioned earlier, it's not a very pleasant game. Gossip is a bizarre variant that really, really fits the tone of the game. Essentially, these cards are nasty rumours that you hold and are very difficult to get rid of. Somebody will tell you you have cheap shoes. Somebody will tell you that your earrings, perhaps, look very interesting. Maybe don't suit the shape of your head. But the amazing thing about gossip cards is you can't just hand them to somebody and say, there you go, minus one point. You need to hand it over to them with an insult, with a slight, something to kick them in the shins a little bit. And the thing about gossip that makes it awesome is the fact that it's not something which makes the game vastly more complex, but it's something that you might want to play with 
if you're playing with people who you're really, really comfortable with. As soon as you introduce the gossip cards, things get really nasty really quickly, and you'll find the female side of the game becoming much more bitey and catty than it otherwise would. If you're playing with people who you don't know very well, the gossip cards might be a step too far and might make the game a little more bitey and horrible than it should be. But if you're playing with close friends, it is so much fun and my God, you are going to hate each other. Ladies and gentlemen is an incredible opener. It's really easy to teach people how to play it and you just get these huge comedy moments when you've got a fully grown man desperately pleading his husband to buy him a tiara and some shoes. It's just instant comedy gold and I've never really played anything quite like it. But perhaps most importantly for a game that's an opener, it's strange, it's unusual. It's the sort of thing where if you've got people who are put off board games because they think it's all space marines and dragons and magic and knights, then this is something that might pique their interest. If you tell them that you're gonna play a game about trading in the stock market so you can buy your wife a lovely hat, they'll be confused. And I think confusion is always a good spot for getting people a little bit more interested in stuff. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get extravagant. If in doubt, scones. And to make scones, you need flour, butter, milk, vanilla juice, sugar, some lipstick, baking stuff, freshly jammed strawberries and Clotty cream, a monogrammed handbag, and egg. Flour. About that much sugar. Two tiny spoons of bakey stuff. And if you can find some in your house, you're also supposed to put in a bit of salt. But I don't know where our salt is. Do this for a bit into a bowl. And then just put some butter into it. You want about that much butters. Maybe actually that much, that much butters. And then lightly finger the butter into the flour. Finger the butter into the flour. Until eventually the butter has entirely disappeared and it's almost as if it was never really there. And once you've mysteriously hidden all that butter, it's time to add approximately some milk. But don't add all the milk at once, because otherwise you'll turn it into horrible soup. No, 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 no. Add a bit of milk at a time until it turns into a pastry. And eventually you'll start to end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now this is the point at which you'll realise that you've forgotten to use the vanilla extract. So just put that back in the cupboard. Put some flour on the tables and then wipe it around like a so. Then you just get the scones, put the scones on the thing, and then just rummage through the drawers and realise that you haven't actually got a cutter of any sort. Et voila! Scones. Then sort of, I think you kind of rub an egg on it, like, I think that this is... And then once you've, you've, uh, oven. After about 12 minutes, Oh, scones. So then you've got tea and scones for the ladies and whiskey and cigars for the gentlemen. But of course cigars are disgusting, so instead just give everyone half a Twix. And so ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Jog on, time to leave, go home. Thank you very much for joining us for the opener. And we'll see you next month. Hmm. Yes.